Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning and welcome to Encounter. I'm your host today, Joe Selipak, with the Broome County Council of Churches. So, Chow has been one of our longstanding programs. We've been working in hunger relief for 40 plus years. And we were, have done some looking at uh, how, we, how we've organized what the need is. For, for instance, in 1985, when we first started doing uh, counts, um, we distributed about 30,000 pounds of food in 1985. We thought that was a great number because we had hit the 30,000 pound mark. Now we're distributing somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.3, 2.4 million pounds of food uh, per year. And we, we, the, the need seems to grow and grow and grow. And we can either, in a, in a situation like this, we can either begin looking at how do we, how do we put more food into the system, or we can at, begin asking other questions like how can we reduce the need on uh, the, on the emergency food system and help people escape poverty, which is a, it's a harder issue, but it's one that we think at the council is worth addressing. How important is it for us to be um, addressing that issue, do you think? I think it's incredibly important. Um, as you mentioned, Chow has been around for 43 years now, um, and today we're, we're distributing in the neighborhood of well over 2 million pounds of food. Um, but the need is more than just emergency food. I think pantries and community meals are necessary, they're needed, but to only have that as our services, it's like building a hospital with only emergency rooms. There needs to be more specialties and we need to address uh, hunger at a more holistic level. So um, the job training program, I think, is really important to shorten that line. So our, our, my guests today are Jack Seaman, he is our Chow Director at the Council of Churches, and Kelly Snyder, who works with our Chow Works program. Um, so Jack mentioned Chow Works. What do you think about uh, the, your program that you're working with? I mean, I think it's incredible. I think it's really important um, to address the, the, the whole person. Uh, we, when we, they come in, when I do the assessment, I tell them that my job isn't just to get them a job. It's to help them identify the barriers they may have been facing that has been keeping them from either finding or maintaining employment. And what kind of uh, barriers would those be? Um, it varies. A lot of things, um, anywhere from people um, having difficulty finding childcare, not being in stable, in stable housing, um, having less than a perfect past. Um, there's, there's a lot of different factors that factor into that. Mm -hmm. so, so we are the, 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 the Broome County Council of Churches, and it's always an interesting question. So people will ask me often, and uh, you know, I'm just curious as to what, how, you would, how you answer these questions. Why? Mm -hmm. Why would the, a council of churches be involved in something like this? Um, I think the council of churches is ready to step up to any challenge that the community has, um, whether, it's, whether it's hunger, whether it's uh, senior citizens independence, whether it's jail ministries, whether it's flooding. Um, and I, don't, I think uh, unemployment and poverty is no different than those issues. It's, something, it's an issue that the community faces, and I think the council of churches uh, says bring it on. But, but oftentimes, uh, you know, people, when they hear the word church, they're only, they're only thinking about spiritual stuff, right? They are. I, I think a lot of times people are a little uh, weirded out when they hear that word. They think of um, judgment, fire, and brimstone. Uh, some people may have had um, a, a not a positive experience with that. But I think at the Council of Churches, we, we really do a great job of, of showing the other side the acceptance, meeting people where they're at, um, and just helping people. And how important is is that kind of uh, that kind of thing when when you're addressing some of the fee the people that come into the child works program? I mean, extremely important. I think just in our in our mission statement says it all. Like con connecting compassion with needs, we have to identify what the needs are, and um, the, what we're doing is doing exactly that: connecting compassion with needs, finding ways to to help them grow as as a person. Yeah. You know, it's 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 interesting to me when I when, you know when I had, when I address that question, you know, when I when I think about Jesus, you know, because we you know we we talk a lot about Jesus at the Council of Churches mm -hmm. because you know frankly, it's a 
you know, that's where a church gets its mm-hmm. start from, is from the, the ministry of Jesus. And, and so, you know, the, the issue, the issue of, of Jesus in Matthew 25 is always, you know, if I was hungry, did you feed me? If I was naked, did you clothe me? If I was in prison, did you visit me? If I was sick, did you, you know, did you take the time? Were you present in the midst of, in the midst of my need? And, and we, want to, we want to feed people we want to be radically with people because by being with them, we're with Jesus somehow. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't know the answer to how that happens, <laughs> but, but it's interesting that, that Jesus, when, when Jesus is talking about uh, the needs in, inside of the, the community or the needs in a person's life, he doesn't discriminate on whether it's a spiritual need or if it's a physical need or if it's something. Mm-hmm. The person comes you know, uh, if they're hungry, he gives them food. If he, they're thirsty, he gives them water, <laughs> you know. Um, and, then, and then maybe through a deeper conversation, they get into, you know, um, some the meaning of their life or something like that. But he meets people where they are, right? I think that um, the story of the Good Samaritan is a really good um, reference to this because a lot of people have trouble with the idea of, you know, Jesus or church, but everyone thinks that being a Good Samaritan is a good idea. And when the Good Samaritan passed by the man in the hole, it just not like the priest or the Levite, he didn't just walk by and say, you know, just get a job. You know, you know, maybe <laughs> if you had a job, you wouldn't have fallen in that hole. He took him out, you know, and he found him a place to stay. He gave him, he got him something to eat and he gave him some money to get him on his way. So I think that like when I think of the job training program, that's kind of the idea that I have behind it being the Good Samaritan that helps them actually get on their feet. And, and, and so like, what are some of the, the ways that we've done that for people? I, you know, there have been, we're, we're now five, five years? Uh, three years. Three years. Three years. Three yeah. years into the program. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that was five years ago that we actually went to the, yep. we went to Jubilee Jobs in five DC. years ago. It came up on my Facebook feed, <laughs> like looking at it going, yeah, I remember going to Jubilee yeah. Jobs. And it took us a while to, to get people um, on, onto the whole idea of Chow being a, 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 a job training place for people, even though we had already been doing it in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, but it took, you know, it took a, a little time for us to get to that place. But when I'm thinking about, when I'm thinking about what we've done um, over three years, you know, mm-hmm. people come, people's faces come back to me yeah. um, and stories. So. Yeah. What, what are some of those? I think one of my favorite stories, which I actually just heard yesterday, to be honest with you, there's a gentleman in the program who, he came into the program and uh, he didn't really have uh, much of a, much work experience. He didn't have a vehicle. He didn't have a driver's license. He had no driving experience. Just remember that part. Um, and he success, successfully completed the program and got a job at Willow Run. Um, and he was able to utilize their shuttle program to get there. He's been there for over a year now. He has a driver's license, and he's now working to get his CDLA, which is, I mean, that's just an incredible opportunity. It's going to completely change his life and what he's able to do and provide for his family. So that, uh, that's an incredible story, and I think there, there are many people who have similar stories who have graduated the program. Now, they come, they come oftentimes with, like, liens even against their license, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, for a lot of individuals living in poverty, if you have a two hundred dollar fine against your license, that's it's impossible to get out of that hole. And so you're either forced to drive without a license, and then that just adds to that debt, um, and and you just can't get out of it. So when you go to a job interview and you don't have a license, it's it's just a, a, a vicious cycle. So what we're able to do is we have specific funding to take care of those problems for people to get people their licenses back to pay off some of their fines so that they're able to uh, get back behind the wheel legally and, and get a job. <laughs> Legal. <laughs> legally, <laughs> yes. Legal is the important yep, word right there, is, right? It is. Yeah, we, we, you know, it's funny because we, we often hear stories about people <laughs> doing weird stuff. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. definitely. They, they have to in order to get by in, in the world. It's, it's almost like we've set them up for failure at no times. No choice, no choice. So, so so Kelly, like how many, how many people are, are generally in the Chow Works program? Um, well, we get um, up to, we have space for up to 12 referrals. We get our referrals from the Department of Social Services. Um, and this past group, we had the full 12 um, assessments done and to start with. So that's how many we start with. So we, we start with about 12 and, and about how many will, will 
officially, you know, we use the word graduate, but. Graduating would be either completing the 12 weeks or essentially the, the goal is to get them employed before the 12 weeks is over. And um, we've had about, over the last three years, about, I think it was about 70%, 70 percent success rate. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty incredible. With, especially with some of the places some of these people are starting in. One of my favorite success stories I'm actually watching unfold right now is a young woman who, um, she had some struggles and she did two years in prison and she just got out uh, within the last year and she, she's been really having a hard time finding a job because of things like gaps in employment and um, not, not a lot of skills and not knowing how to answer the question in an interview, do you have any prior convictions? And we've been able to, um, she didn't waste the time that she spent when she was incarcerated. She did a whole bunch of training. She was working the entire time she was in there. So we were able to find the way to put that on her resume. So that filled in all the gaps in her employment and um, do some training on how to answer that question in the interview to highlight the things that she's done since then. And everyone in the warehouse just like speaks so highly ever she's she's an incredible mm -hmm. um she has an incredible work ethic and it's just incredible to watch her blossom that's pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah. and it makes you kind of proud to be involved in the Absolutely. project isn't it it's it's funny because we you know we it's not funny there's nothing funny about it um but we we really we really see people on both ends of the spectrum when they come in the kind of the kind of barriers the kind of um uh kind of lifestyle, the, mm -hmm. the choices that they've made and other kinds of things. And then then through the course of the program on the other end you get to see you get to see how how it really has made a difference inside of someone's life. Just this just simple thing. So mm -hmm. so can you lead us through what happens in the Child Works program? Um, so kind of to what you were just saying, it, a lot of times people come in and they, they, they come in defeated and they come in feeling identified by the, the choices they've made in the past. And a lot of times they're too close to their own problem to see any other solutions. So that's kind of um, my job to directly work with them. And after we've identified these barriers, one of the greatest things that we can do is um, if it's something, there's a lot of things that we can help them with, like we get them the job training to actual skills, learning in the how to work in the warehouse, do inventory, they learn customer service because they're dealing with different agencies that come in. So it's developing a lot of um, skills there and um, they spend the mornings doing that. And in the afternoon they're doing different programming. We have uh, Visions and SEFQ come in, they teach them financial literacy. Just basic things like how to create a budget are some things that, that can change the entire trajectory of their life. Um, we get them certifications. They're getting their OSHA certification, um, their Serve Safe certification, making them a certified food handler, and a forklift certification. So they're um, adding a lot of skills into um, that they take even into their personal life. That changes how they. Um, one of the greatest successes for me is watching someone become more engaged in their own life, taking. Um, um, control and realizing that like okay I couldn't see the the solution here but once we're able to access the access resources for them they, they can change you know the tra trajectory of the rest of their life. Now my guests today are Jack Seaman who is our child director at the Council of Churches and and Kelly Snyder who's um, our child works director and we've um, um, you, it, it's, it's interesting that that financial literacy would be one of the things that we really want to stress with with people um, you know, there are a couple of things that come to mind, and we've 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 run into these issues over a course of time. One is one is developing even a checking account, because mm -hmm. many times people will come to us without mm -hmm. without something as simple as a checking account mm -hmm. um, or a way to be able to cash a check without having to pay the check cashing fees mm -hmm. that come with come with that. And to me, that's one of the that is a huge issue that I, I think that, you know, if you can address just the fee structure mm -hmm. that comes along with, with, with poverty, um, yeah. you could go a long way. And the other, one, the other one that comes to mind is being able to save money so you can pay cash for things. Yeah. So instead of having to go like to the rent, rent a center or mm -hmm. other kinds of places where you, you have easy access to something, but then it ends up costing you three or four times the, sure. the price of the, the the thing the um, the item that they were looking at getting it it those two th those two things are huge in in the life of these people that we're trying to work with isn't it it is definitely I think yeah the, the predatory style of um, you know check cashing businesses 
and uh, rental places that yeah people do end up spending uh, they're paying five times what the, that washer or dryer is mm -hmm. worth um, and it's just because it's simple and it's easy and I think it's designed that way to, to, to kind of target that the, that group of people um, so just those basic skills are really important to have but also you know having higher aspirations for your life we've had individuals in the program who want to be homeowners one day mm -hmm. and you know these institutions can walk them through you know what they have to do people tackling their debt what is their credit score right now I think a lot of folks who might be in debt um, they don't really understand what it's like or what they can do or, and they're just so overwhelmed that they just completely ignore it and they just live day by day but really taking ownership of your life of your financial situation and creating a plan that is a realistic plan to take care of that and one day you know lift yourself up and, and maybe become a homeowner is really important and it's really empowering and convincing participants that they're worth that that that's possible for them is it is a full-time job mm -hmm. um, but it's so worth it because it's so important and that that perhaps is is leading maybe into wh where where do you think so if you're to have a magic ball and you're <laughs> like you know be able to see see um, 10 years into the future with the child works program um, what do you what do you think we might be doing in 10 years that might be even different than what we're currently doing? Um, well, me personally, uh, what I would like to do is start to establish more official relationships with employers in the community. I think if some of these larger warehouse operations and businesses um, were able to see what we're doing and maybe give us some feedback, then we can really optimize the program to be the, the, the best that it could possibly be and um, have an easier job getting people employment at those places. Um, that's that's kind of what I'd like to see in the in the future for the program as well as you know possibly expanding the amount of participants. Mm -hmm. One of my goals, something that um, we're you know in the very very beginning stages of, of dreaming about right now is creating um, a wheels to work program. Um, mm -hmm. Finding a way to there's other places in other states that I'm you know communicating with and, and replicating how they do it because transportation ultimately is a large percentage of the barriers that that I run into and mm -hmm. there are other resources in the community. Um, um, Get their transportation is one that that we can connect people with that can help them figure out a temporary solution. But um, my my dream my dream baby is wheels to work program. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these are these are interesting. I you know I've I, I've thought about the the especially when you think about how far some of the the, mm -hmm. the um, warehouses are from Binghamton or you know mm -hmm. we're we're a warehouse distribution um, and uh, handling kind of program and so the the obvious the obvious linkage would be places like Mains and Willow Run yeah. and Dix and and other places where there are large warehouses. But those, those are so far out that it's it's hard to get to in, in yeah. a lot of ways, and so and they're not on bus lines, or if it, they are on a bus line, it's going to take them hours to get there, uh, perhaps even more hours than what they have. So yeah. it's a these are these are interesting 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 ideas, and and you know I've I've thought about. Um, you know the the issue of of trying to connect people directly with employment because it seems to me as if those relationships we 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 have some of them with Chow right we do so how do we how do we begin to build trust with people to the point where they're willing to hire somebody that's been through our program I think it's really making that initial contact as well as making sure that the folks that we are sending to those businesses to be employed there are the best that they can be and I think that's what we work on we, we make sure that um, we're training people to the best of our abilities and making sure that they are knowledgeable and skilled at what they do so that when they go there they can really stand out and they see that you know they see Chow on their resume and they and that it means something to them and I think Chow already carries a pretty large name in the community as well as the Council of Churches so we have that going for us I think it's just the other half of the work is, is, ours, is ours to do. Mm -hmm. And in connecting with um, employers, one of the things that I started doing that I want to um, expand on is part of the program is a mock interview. So we have professionals from the community right. come into our location, volunteer their time to help our um, participants learn interview skills. And one of the connections we've made at UHS, um, one of their recruiters comes and does uh, our mock interviews and <laughs> she's helped at least one person actually get a job and has offered that help to quite a few others. So I think in reaching out to some of um, these larger companies, uh, their HR departments maybe to see about help 
connecting there. Mm -hmm. Well, th th this is this is a great program that we're involved in. I I, I always think you know that we we need to uh, we need to ha highlight it more. You know because it's one of those it's one of those things that we we do, and the way that we do it really adds a lot to the dignity of people because we, we don't try to treat them as if they're a problem mm -hmm. to be solved or you know one of the things that that I, I remember when we were thinking about doing the job training program was you know trying to look at what kind of job training programs were in the community or or were around um, in our area and we didn't really find anything that specifically gave people you know um, certifications and other kinds of things like that they would oftentimes be put into a room with the computer mm -hmm. and the computer they, they would have access to you know uh, Word um, Excel or other kinds of programs and they would develop a resume and then have a little place for them to call people and other kinds of things like that but there was nothing really tangible that they were getting through the process they were you know it's all it was basically all on them and and what we're what we're trying to do is kind of reverse it so some of it is on them they have to show up to work on time mm -hmm. right they mm -hmm. have to yes. they have to work their way through the program and at the end they're if they if they graduate because um, we not everybody is assured of graduation right. Right. We, we don't and there have there have been times when we've had to let people go right, right. Yes. yes. Because we, we want to maintain the, the 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 structure and the 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 rigor of the program itself, yes. and and so um, it's a combination of tough tough love on one end, but on the other end, if you get through the program, seventy per, you're more likely to get a job. Absolutely, <laughs> it's like a it's like the, that's that's the way that we kind of approach it, and and um, so we're we're dealing with we're dealing with real people with real barriers, real issues inside their life, and then we're, we're trying to present them with um, real opportunity, too, on the other end of it. And so it's honoring their dignity, it's connecting, like in, in a lot of ways, it's connecting, yeah. like, like what you said, Kelly, you know, it's connecting compassion, mm -hmm. the compassion of, of, of the council, the compassion of people with the real needs that are inside of real people's lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems to me as if this is a, it's it's a match made in heaven, mm -hmm. so to speak, yep. um, uh, and it's funny that I would say that too, you know, <laughs> because we are at the Council of Churches, right? So it seems to me as if we we need to really be thinking about thinking about how do we expand this program and make it make it so that other people will will um, will be able to access it in in a way. Um, so if a if a person wanted to be involved in the program. I don't know how many of our listeners are in that kind of a um, in, in that kind of a, a way. How would they how would they get it get it connected to uh, to the program? So right now, in order to be eligible for the program, um, you need to have an open case for the Department of Social Services. Uh, any kind of services that you're receiving, and then speak to your case manager, talk to them about the Child Works program, how you're interested in it, and that you'd like to be referred to it for the next cohort. And I think that wouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, how, and how long would they have to wait? Well, the program is 12 weeks long, so it depends on at what point when the program is running that they find out about it. Um, last group, when we were in about week 10, um, a previous participant had mentioned it, the program, um, at, it, it, in a setting where there was a lot of other people um, who were receiving services, and I got a call from our job developer that day, and there was seven people who walked into her office and said, hey, I heard about this program, I want to do it. So that's where the majority of this group came from. Excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so the word of mouth, word of mouth is a huge thing Absolutely. then. Yeah, Definitely. very cool. And so, you know, what, what are, um, so if you're thinking about, if you're thinking about other stories that, that people have, have mm -hmm. had, what are, you know, I, I was reminded about that guy who was a mechanic who yes. needed to, to what, how did that story go? So there was a gentleman in the program who did not have a license. He was an incredibly skilled mechanic. Um, he could work on anything, he could do anything. All he needed was the tools and a place to do that. And he did not have a license. He had uh, fines that were really holding him back from being employed in that, that atmosphere. So we were able to walk him through the program. He graduated the program. He got all the certificates, 
all the licenses we paid for his fines and um, he immediately got a job at a, uh, a me mechanic shop and the program was actually able to get him tools um, at this particular shop you needed your own tools so they were actually able to get him brand new tools to work on vehicles and um, he would he would come and visit and and say hello and and show us you know what he's been doing and it's just it's, it's just another one of those stories where it's just great to see that that was his passion and he's able to do that now mm -hmm. I've um, I, I go back to that story a lot because it's one of the ones where it's it's very obvious what we're trying to do with people because mm -hmm. uh, obviously he had he already had skills he but there were so many barriers that kept him from being able to employ mm -hmm. his 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 gift his gifts mm -hmm. in life and we 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 try to help people be able to get to that point where they can employ their gifts mm -hmm. so um, very obvious very 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 good stuff so I want to I want to thank both of you for being on encounter this is a um, uh, one of my favorite programs that we do at the at the council um, I have Chris Mogensen on and on occasions I'll talk about about his his programs as being very important, very, very, very practical because mm -hmm. they, they really are the places where we are connecting, connecting compassion with needs, inspiring growth with dignity, mm -hmm. and you can see it very obvious in, in what in what you all do. So I want to thank uh, Jack Seaman and, and Kelly Snyder for being on Encounter this morning. I want to thank all of you for watching, and for all, for any of you that are experiencing uh, perhaps even. The worst thing that you can in life i want to remind you you don't walk alone there's always more more um, there are programs out there there are people out there there are people that are rooting for you there are people in your corner so i want you to be good and gentle with yourself today and have a great day